Hey everybody and welcome back to Parkitect. In the last episode I finished Maple Meadows and we unlocked the Chanute airfield scenario. And I also have to say this is one of the scenarios which I didn't make myself, but I've been looking a little bit into it and what it's about. So the description says it's a small airfield which is now available for use for, well, turning it into some kind of theme park. And as a sort of special challenge, it states that all of the old structures are landmarks, so we're not going to be able to remove any of the existing like terminals and hangar buildings. So that's something to keep in mind. And then the goals are a little bit of a step up from the last scenario, but not too much. So 250 guests in the park and the optional goal of 400 park tickets. Now I looked into this a tiny bit. This is a uh, scenario made by Joshua from the US. And I am pretty sure that this is based on the airfield or the Air Force Base in uh, Illinois in the US, which is also called Chanute. And it's now been abandoned since 1993, I think. And I think the idea to turn that into a theme park was probably his and is probably based on the real life Air Force Base. In any case, let's just start the scenario and see if we can turn this into anything. All right, so these are just the basic goals. The map is quite simple. It's just the runway, actually. So it's it's a bit of a weird shape to build a theme park in. So I'm also really curious if I can turn that into anything good. And there's some interesting scenery. There's a little airplane on the roof here. And this really cool... I don't know what you call those things in English, actually. Whatever. Uh, that thing. The first thing that came to mind was a wind sock. I don't know if that's actually what you call it. That's a bit of a weird word, isn't it? Anyway, we've got that thing over there. That's pretty cool. It's outside the boundaries of the park, though. So maybe I'll buy some land to go there. Anyway, this is just a very simple runway and that's all. But I don't think I'll be raising this runway to the ground and replacing it with grass. I could technically do that because it's just terraforming. But I kind of like the idea of keeping all of the airport infrastructure intact and trying to theme the park after the airport. So I think we'll try that. Shouldn't be too difficult, seeing that we only need to get 250 guests into the park. And then over here, uh, this sort of air or airplane storage thing is really just the depot where all of the supplies come in. So that's really interesting. So we'll need to have some kind of background or, or backstage area over here where all the staff can mingle. In any case, I'm just about ready to start building a few rides and a small food court in this park, maybe even a roller coaster or two. That said, I do want to know what we actually have. Uh, so we have the plane carousel, of course, then some very simple thrill rides and... Oh, these are all really small coasters. Okay, that's, that's definitely something to keep in mind. I think that's good though. I really like it when you start out a scenario and especially when the first scenarios start out with very simple and easy rides and you only get into the more interesting and unique coasters later on. That's something which I think Roller Coaster Tycoon did, which I enjoyed a lot. And then in Roller Coaster Tycoon 2, you just get all of the rides straight from the start, which is terrible, I think. It's cool to sort of get a progression in terms of what kind of rides you get. Uh, I do think I want to research something though, so I'm just going to hire a research team, not give them too much money, and have them just look into thrill rides. In any case, I think it's a good time for a time lapse. I'll build a few rides and a food court, and we'll see what comes out of it. Alright, now I'm starting off with the food court, and it's a little bit more big and rectangular than I would normally want to do. Normally I would totally recommend against building big boxy buildings, because it's really hard to make them look nice and inviting. But I think with the theme that we have in the map here, it really just fits to make very large rectangular boxy buildings. And I think I'm just gonna keep them all very boring and simple on purpose to fit with the theme of the sort of industrial airfield kind of look and I'll try to make all of the decorations to be more sort of add-ons to the existing buildings so all kinds of path elements and planters and little details to kind of spruce up the look of the buildings but keep the look of the buildings themselves to be sort of as if they weren't designed with a theme park in mind because that's the idea right it's a bit of a conversion of a former airfield into a probably slightly nicer place to be. And I think for the food court, it mostly works as well because it's not sitting in a place which is a runway. 
it's kind of between all the different runway as, uh, runways and places for airplanes, so that more or less should work, I think. But then for the rest of the park, I'll also try to keep some of the buildings a little bit um, smaller, I suppose, and see if I can fit the large buildings that I do want to build just outside the runway to kind of make it seem really as if this is a very recent conversion and there isn't really anything new and like large builds on the former runway. Anyway, I moved into the first ride, which of course is the little airplane ride. I thought it'd be cool to have a bit of a, a hangar kind of look to the Q roof as well. And I just looked this up actually, and I feel like such an idiot. I know I pronounced it as Hangar earlier, which is the way that you pronounce it in Dutch. And it's the way that you pronounce the word uh, in French as well, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so that's just more or less how I thought you'd say it in English, but apparently it's hangar, so I need to correct myself there. Anyway, it sounds weird. I don't know, hangar sounds a little bit nicer, but maybe that's just me being used to that. In any case, so we're moving into the runway, and I'm just building some of the flat rides along the sides of the real runway, and then I'll be building a coaster and other such sort of transportable looking stuff on the runway itself. So what I'm also trying to do here is that because this is such a recent conversion from an air for uh, or airfield force air force field based thing <laughs> into a theme park i'm trying to also make all of the rides look a bit like they are transportable rides so i don't want to get into big coasters that snake around the park but kind of make everything look a little bit more like a fairground so all of the rides so far are quite simple and don't really have too much immersive theming and then for the coaster, which I'll be starting on in a second, that's just going to be a very small uh, mini coaster with a very transportable sort of fairground look to it. So yeah, here we go. Here's the, uh, the coaster, which I think should also be called a wild mouse. It's a wild mouse in any case. And these things just work so well in this game. I think it always helps to just make them go down on a very gentle slope on the curves, on the hairpin turns. So you can have every section of the hairpin to be a little bit lower than the section before that. Because in real life these things are also built on a very slight incline. So you can kind of see the, the turns go down a little bit as they go. So yeah, we've got that. And then we're moving into the more intense part of the layouts where you always have these drops. And there's always this signature drop which kind of has a bit of a hill in the middle of it. So I decided to add that as well. I'm not sure if... A lot of these have these. I think they are more common on the spinning wild mouse coasters, but I'm pretty sure you see them on these kinds of rides too. Anyway, I never trust these things. They're always painful. They <laughs> they are some of the most bootleg rides in theme parks, but it fits the theme of this park, so I figured why not. It's also a pretty good coaster from a gameplay perspective to get something with some really good stats and a pretty decent intensity on a very small footprint and a very low cost. So it works pretty well from that perspective as well. Also, and God, this is a totally different kind of game, but I really was remind of, reminded of it. There's uh, a YouTube channel called Marcel Voss, who does videos about OpenRCT2, showing the best kinds of layouts for all kinds of roller coasters in Roller Coaster Tycoon. And it's one of my favorite channels recently. It's really cool stuff, really going into the science of what makes a roller coaster good in that game. And even though it's a different game, I think to some extent a lot of the ideas that he brings are translatable into Park Tech as well. So always try to keep your coasters cheap and compact while trying to get, you know, the biggest bang for your buck basically, trying to get the largest heights and the fastest speeds in the smallest layouts and it's just a generally good idea if you not only want to get something that's decent from a gameplay perspective but you can also mix this pretty well with a, a bit of realism as well since a lot of theme parks will obviously want to go for the same kind of thing the theme parks that have the money to spend all their cash on an enormous ride are few and far between and most parks realistically will just go for smaller rides and even secondhand roller coasters in any case, that's just about it for this time lapse, so let's head back into the real time section and see what it looks like. Alright, now we're gonna have to make this park function somehow, so I think for now just one janitor should be enough. We're gonna need one hauler over here, and come think of it, I probably also need a way to connect this path to the paths in the park itself. 
So I'm probably just going to make a gate or something over here. I'm not quite sure yet. But of course the stuff that I do have is going to need a way to go over here and go to the staff room or whatever else I end up building there. For now though, it should be more or less fine. They should be alright enough without a staff room for a while. Um, and I just opened up everything, including the park. But it seems like people are, are already finding their way, more or less. That said, I don't know about all of the prices. This seems to be good enough. I was told that for some of the bigger coasters, you can ask about 2.5 times the excitement rating, but I'm really not sure yet how much money you can ask for rides, so I'm really gonna have to sort of discover that along the way. But I think for this one, I could try asking $7 for it, and we'll see if people wanna spend that money. Um, looking at this coaster though, I think I wanna close it down for a second. I didn't think about that, but you generally don't want to have the maximum amount of trains that you can on the certain amount of blocks that you have in a coaster since, well, that just makes all of the cars stuck on the block brakes all the time. So somebody was asking this in the comment section of the last video as well. Basically, if you have block brakes, this sort of divides the coaster up into different blocks and you are only allowed to really have one car on a single block at a time. It's sort of an inherent safety mechanism of a roller coaster which makes sure that coaster cars can never crash into each other because you can never be on the same block as another car and if it does end up happening then you'll suddenly be stopped on the brakes so that's also why sometimes if you're on a coaster you just get these violent brakes and you just have to stop for a second and if that's happening it's just because there's still a train or a car on the block in front of you and um, they're trying to avoid that so when a crash does happen it's usually because of a block brake failure and um, in the case of the Smiler crash in Alton Towers for instance this was actually due to human failure because somebody at the buttons was overriding the block brakes because the block brake system is a completely automated system and given that everything works it should never go wrong and pretty much keep a coaster 100% feel safe. In any case that's a bit of a long explanation about that but the reason that I don't want to have too many cars on these coasters when you do rely on block brake sections is that there will always be a car on the block in front of you if you have the maximum amount of cars so they'll almost always stop on the block sections and that's a bit annoying you want to try and time them in such a way that the cars never really have to stop uh, that said I'm still seeing the cars stopping on some of the on some of the brakes I think it's not a big issue at the end here and it's not really a big issue at the beginning either but this one I would like to not have it do that so actually I wonder uh, and this is a bit of a gameplay test but I wonder if you can have two block breaks in a row and if that's just gonna create another block or not okay so we're gonna put a block break over here and one over here does that increase the amount of yeah that doesn't increase the amount of cars so this won't add an extra block that's good to know uh, in that case I'm need to I'm gonna need to find a different solution to that problem I suppose and I'm thinking about dividing the station into an entrance and an, and an exit section. Yeah, that would actually be quite good. So I'm going to need to figure out a way to make this look nicer. But realistically, you want to have one place where the people exit the car. And then it moves a little bit to another part of the station where people enter the new train. So I'm just going to put this in here. Put an extra block break in there. Then we can add two extra blocks. That's amazing. I'm going to have seven trains and run it like that and then I'm just gonna have to see if I can theme it very nicely so realistically this is actually the way to go this is how a lot of these coasters will work the only problem is from a from a gameplay perspective you won't have the platform for the station in the middle so it looks a little bit weird so I'm just gonna try to fill this in with some kind of wall anything that I've used before I also got the question on the last video if I keep like a certain set of textures or a certain a uh, set of colors ready and really you can save color schemes like these things over here but as you might be able to notice these are super old color schemes I think from back when I was working on Cydonia Hills so that's a long time ago so I actually don't really use the color scheme function I just use the pipette tool and go around copying the colors of objects that I placed earlier like this and then just replace it like so and I think that more or less works. I really don't see a reason to do anything else than that because it just 
it doesn't take too much effort and you don't have to keep saving all of these different color schemes. All right, now I think if I make this a little bit lighter, it'll look a tiny bit better. Oh God, not like that. There we go. I'll just keep the station like that. Unfortunately, I can't really see it test anymore because it just broke down because of the... Actually, I don't think it's broken down. I think it's just not running because there's a thunderstorm and it's too dangerous. But in any case, I'm just going to open it like this. It should be more or less fine. And then we'll see how that'll go. Now, I'm not actually getting any supplies being delivered to these places, so... Okay, she's working. All right. I think... Just Sarah over here should be able to handle all of the supplies, but I'm not entirely sure. We'll see how that goes. But I'll just leave her work alone for the time being. And I'm just going to hook this up over here. Make sure that the employees can actually go somewhere. That said, I kind of want to try my best to hide this a little bit because it's probably affecting the decoration rating. Oh yeah, god, that's terrible. So... I don't know if I explain this too much, but you get a decoration rating in the game, and it's based on how many decorations the guests see. So you can see over here, it's really good. But if they see backstage elements, and yeah, I have briefly explained this, but not really shown it that well. If they see backstage elements, this really detracts from the decoration rating. So this is all red over here because they are looking at the staff room here, and that's not something that guests want to see. So I'm actually going to test this for a little bit, uh, see if we can put something over here. Um, probably not this, but hold up, let me get back to that, see if we can see it change live. Now that actually doesn't help at all. <laughs> um, maybe, maybe a small pavilion will work, I don't know. Let's get this out of here. Um, let's give it that sort of color. God, that's actually going to be difficult. I'm going to have to hide that better, I'm not going to keep that in there, definitely not, because I want to keep that rating positive. So if all goes well, and if I place a fence over here, yeah, then the rating becomes a lot better. There we go, it's all green again. Okay, so we are doing good there. I think if I put a tree over here, maybe the rating will become a little bit better still. Okay, yeah, there we go. All green now. Okay, so that's awesome. The rating over here is really bad because there's a broken down bench. And actually, mechanics should fix these things, but I'm not going to wait for that. So let's just put it there. And there we go, that fixed itself. I'm just going to have to find a little pathway somewhere where I can probably enter from in here and hide the path to the backstage area a little bit better. In any case, it seems like the park is running alright. We're not quite making a profit yet, but we're making less of a loss, so that's pretty good. And it seems like people are willing to pay $7 for a tiny wild mouse ride. So that's a rip-off, but I mean, people are paying for it, so let's just go for it. And this is way too cheap, so let's go and let's make that 450. And uh, this can also be a bit more expensive. I think they'll be willing to pay four dollars for that. And then there's the Ferris wheel. I wonder how that's doing, because these things are not actually that useful. But that seems to be doing all right. So we're all making money everywhere. That's pretty good, except this one, but. This will probably end up making money in due time. Um, so overall, not too shabby, I think. I'm going to have to wait a little bit longer to see if the park is actually doing alright. But so far, I think we're off to a decent start. I can probably head back into a small time lapse, and I'll probably be able to reach the guest goal with the remaining $7,000 left. So yeah, let's go. Alright, now I didn't think that I would need too many more rides since there were already quite a few guests in the park and I already uh, paused the game to make sure that not too many other guests were still entering. So I'm just building this one Riptide ride and that's just about it. The majority of this time lapse will be spent on a kiddie coaster or it's more of a family coaster. I think the coaster that it's based on in real life is the Vekoma roller skater. So it's, you know, not the smallest kind of coaster in the world. It's a step up from the absolute mini transportable kitty coaster. But it's a good one for the kids anyway, and a lot of parks have it. So I thought it'd be nice to feature in the park. I might not even really need it in terms of reaching the guest count, since I ended up reaching the guest count much earlier than I expected again, and going over it quite a bit as well when I just let the game play at the end of my playthrough. But 
I think from uh, from a perspective of just looking at this park as its own little park, regardless of what scenario goals I need to reach, I thought it would just be fitting to include a small kitty coaster. Anyway, I thought here would be a, a good area. It's also a bit of an outskirt, it's pretty far away from the entrance, so I wanted to stop the whole pathing experience over here and just finish this side of the park off with a small roller coaster. And I think this should do the job pretty well. It's also one of my favorite coasters to build in the game, just because it's quite simple in terms of layout. It doesn't really use any unique elements or anything complicated. But I think it works really well with the combination of banking, turns and height differences that you can get in Parkitect. Because one of my absolute favorite things about this game's track mechanism is that you don't really have to choose from a set like number of pieces. Kind of like you had to in games like Roller Coaster Tycoon. You more or less just select the banking and the curve and the level that you want to go up and down for each track piece, and you're completely free in making weird combinations. So you can even make outward banked curves if you so desire to do that. And you can make all kinds of transitions going from straight to gentle to steep slopes as well during a curve as well as going from all kinds of banking transitions. So I think that sort of system works really well for coasters like these, where you don't really have to deal with too many special elements and you're just kind of meandering in and out of the layout. So I really like building these things. It's just a simple little layout with some helixes, not too many drops. I think it's way too terrible when it comes to the stats. It doesn't actually have much of an intensity rating at all, but it's decently realistic so that's why I like it and it fits well with the theme as well I think it doesn't really need a lot of theming so I just put a little airplane down and some flags on the side there to make everything look a little bit more fancy this was low-key inspired by Energy Landia in Poland which has terrible theming but I think they do the theming for their Formula One coaster pretty well so that was a bit of an inspiration for this one and then the station is also just a simple modern glassy station. I also decided to add some more lights throughout the park since Park Tech has a night mode and I always forget to switch to it but it's always fun to look at your park at night as well. And since the runway didn't have any of those runway lights I just decided to add those as well for some random reason. I think it works alright though and definitely for some of the uh, darker parts of the park it helps to light those up as well. So that's basically it for the coaster area. I decided to last minute add a Gravitron and originally I also wanted to add another flat ride besides this one but I let the game play as you can see and I didn't actually pause it well at the right time. I paused it over here but eventually I ended up reaching the guest count much earlier than I thought so I couldn't entirely finish it. In any case let's look back at what the park ends up looking like. All right. So I hit 250 guests way earlier than I thought. So I'm pretty much done, I suppose, with the scenario. But it seems a little bit unfinished still. So what I think I'm going to do is I just want to put one little ride, if I have the money for that actually, over here to maybe finish off the park. Although that said, I guess I really don't have the money for that. I might as well just put a little fence over here and... Call it a day, I suppose. See, so yeah, I think I'm actually just gonna do that. Uh, as long as these guests are getting out of the way, I can actually close it up over here. Okay, never mind. That's that's not gonna be doable. All right, let's just wait for these guys to be done. All right, there we go. And I'll just round up the park over here. I don't think there's much else that I can still really do. So I'll just put a fence over here, and then we'll call it a day. Let's open up the Gravitron. So I was originally thinking I could still maybe build another ride over here, but I hit the goal much earlier and I don't actually have that much money either, so this is gonna have to be it, I suppose. So let's just put a quick fence over here. I don't know, I think it just kind of fits to put a fence to kind of fence off the areas, which even though they're part of the park, aren't really part of the park to visit in a way. So let's just put that in there. And maybe just a few final plants here and there. And that should pretty much finish up the park. Right, one of these trees. And there we go. I think that's, that's pretty good. 
All right, so this is the park in its final stage. I'm pretty happy with it. I think it follows the theme which the map gives pretty well. It doesn't really have any interesting or detailed buildings or anything, but just by keeping the variety of rides and all kinds of small path elements and decorations, I still think it's a pretty charming and cozy theme park. To the extent that an airfield can be that, I suppose. And I'm actually quite happy with the rides as well. We still don't have any big roller coasters. I still think they're not really part of these first scenarios. Um, maybe you could get into that if you research them and spend a lot of money on it. But really there isn't enough time or uh, resources to really get into that sort of stuff in the first scenario. So I think it fits to just start off with these very small junior and family coasters. And we'll maybe get into some bigger stuff later on. So yeah, overall... I'm pretty happy with the results. It's also making a lot of money, a lot more than I thought, really. I still think it's a little bit easy, but that said, I don't want to say that too soon because I know how hard some of the later scenarios are going to get. So we're doing pretty good so far, and I'm very happy with this park. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time when we move into the next one, which I believe is going to be Victoria Lake, but I'll have to check that again in the next episode. So yeah. Bye, guys.